Not too long ago, I did a video on um, William Henry Connolly from this same website. And uh, this one has to do with a watchtower as well. This is John H. Patton, forgotten co-founder of a sect. And it says John H. Patton from 1843 to 1922 was one of the five men who were significant in helping Charles Taze Russell start the Watchtower movement, now represented mainly by the JW sect. Patton wrote his biography in 1915, and this is reprinted below. The, bi the biography, however, omits any mention of Patton's involvement with Russell or Patton's involvement with N.H. Barber, another of the men who helped Russell get started. This period of Patton's life covered almost 10 years. I will fill in a few of the details of those 10 years. In 1873, Patton joined a group run by Nelson H. Barber. Barber's group was connected to the Advent Christian Church, a sect related to the Seventh-day Adventists. Barber had been involved in the prophecies of 1843 and 1844, when about 100,000 people seriously expected Jesus to return. Barber lost his faith when the predictions failed and went to Australia to dig for gold. In 1859, he returned to America. On the return voyage, he studied the Bible again and again became convinced that certain prophetic calculations were correct. In the late 1860s, Barber began to publish his ideas and collect a group of followers. At that time, he preached that Jesus would come in 1873. In that year, Barber started a monthly magazine called The Midnight Cry. This predicted Christ's coming for 1874. Patton became the assistant editor to Barber soon after the magazine began. The circulation reached 15,000. When Jesus failed to arrive in 1874, the little sect changed it to early 1875. When this failed, Barber and Patton taught that Jesus had returned in 1874, after all, but invisibly. Most of the readers of the Midnight Cry did not accept this idea, and the circulation fell drastically to only a few hundred. At this stage, Charles T. Russell, a rich store owner, entered the scene. Russell had been converted to Adventist ideas in 1869 by Jonas Wendell. Then, for three years, he was taught by George Storrs, the leader of another Adventist sect. Wendell had taught that the world would be burned up in 1873, and Storrs had awaited the return of Jesus in 1870. By 1876, Russell was in charge of his own Bible group of about 20 people. Russell, in 1876, believed in an invisible return of Jesus. Because Patton and Barber had the same idea, Russell contacted them. The two cults joined into one with about 100 members. They predicted that they, the living saints, would rise physically to heaven in 1878. On Passover night, many of them gathered in white robes, but nothing happened. Barber and Russell now began going separate ways. Patton stayed with Russell, this doubtless being a factor that influenced the majority of the cult to follow Russell rather than Barber. In 1879, Russell started Zion's Watchtower with the help of H.B. Rice, a failed prophet of California, who donated his subscriber list to Russell. Russell now taught that the saints would go skywards in 1881. As late as January 1881, the Watchtower taught, we would expect our change by or before the fall of 1881. From Watchtower Reprints, pages 180 to 181. Meanwhile, Russell urged his followers to donate money in order to avoid sickness and death. Such latest false prophecies may be the reason why Patton left the cult. In a 333-page book, Day Dawn, 1880, Patton argued, the exact time when the resurrection of the dead, or the translation of the living church is due, we do not pretend to know, but think we have good reason for believing that they will have taken place before the time of the end has expired, or before 1914. 
Apparently, therefore, Patton wanted to place the translation of the Living Church nearer to 1914 rather than in 1881. Patton left no organization to carry on his ministry upon his death. He lived long enough, 1922, to see Russellism undergo many of the doctrinal changes, power struggles, and prophetic failures that transformed it into Jehovah's Witnesses. A factor that helped the Watchtower religion survive the many power struggles is that most of the prominent members always supported the man at the very top. Often such seconds, thirds, and fourths in the hierarchy also deserted the sect later on. But again, on an individual basis, just as happened in Patton's case. Patton, being one of the earliest, can uh, therefore be seen as a forgotten co-founder of the JW sect. John Patton has hundreds of surviving descendants. Few, if any of them, realize that when they get that door knock on Sunday mornings, their great-great-great-great-grandfather is partly responsible. And there's a autobiography here written out and as for this book day dawn i have the pdf here and you can see in the way this is written out with the many chapters here it's it's just like reading a volume from charles taze russell and uh, just a side note here this picture of this son here uh, made me think of this, the home theater that the Russellites used, the Bible students used for their photodrama of creation, and the symbol here. So I'll post the link for this website here and the PDF if you'd like to check it out.